And somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. If you would, with me in your Bibles, turn to the book of Luke, chapter 13. Also, the book of Isaiah, chapter 45. Isaiah, chapter 45. We will be looking at Luke, chapter 13, first. And then we will go to Isaiah, chapter 45. And Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse number 6. Luke chapter 13, beginning with verse number 6. The Bible says, And he spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years, everyone said three years, I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? In other words, why are we wasting space for this tree? And he answering and said unto him, meaning the vineyard dresser, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it, I'm going to dig around it, and dung it, meaning feed it, and get, fertilize it, right? Amen. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after, after that, thou shalt cut it down. Verse 10, And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and bowed down together and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called unto her and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thy infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Let's look at Isaiah 45, beginning with verse number 2. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass, and I will cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of the secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my, ser my servant's sake, and Israel, my elect, I even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. And everyone said amen. And tonight I'm going to teach, preach on this thought, making things straight. Making things straight. This woman was bent over, crooked for 18 years. This tree was barren for three years. But in Isaiah it says, I'm going to make the crooked thing straight. Are you hearing me today? Hallelujah. Amen. This year, God is going to make some things straight in your life. I said, this year is not over. How many of you need God to straighten some things out in your life? How many of you need God to straighten out your children? 
How many need God to straighten out your marriage? How many need God to straighten out your finances? How many need God to straighten out your job? Oh, hallelujah. I declare that this year is your year. This year, if you believe the word of God tonight, God is going to do a miracle in your life. He's going to straighten out some things. He's going to straighten out the crooked way. He's going to make some things straight. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Let's worship him once more. God, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray, God, over this congregation, and I declare that the power and the anointing of Almighty God would go, Father, from these lips into the hearts uh, of these people tonight to create faith uh, and to create hope, God, that you, Lord, would put your hand in each and every one, in each and every one's life, God, to make things straight, God, to deal with situations that nobody knows about. Lord, you are are able you are able to heal to deliver to set free you are able father to make the crooked way straight by the power that's in the name of Jesus we give you all the praise and all the glory clap your hands to God and say thank you Lord come on thank him already thank him thank him for doing it before he does it that's faith honey that's faith that's faith. Come on. Thank him like you mean it. God, thank you for saving my son. Thank you, God, for doing the miracle. Thank you, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Turn to somebody and say, he's making some things straight in my life. Tonight. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you believe that God is going to make some things straight in your life, amen, give God some praise. Come on, some of you ought to shout the victory. Somebody ought to shout the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, do it. Like if you already have it, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Now, the rest of you are just going to be looky-loos today as people receive blessing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, here in the book of Luke chapter 13, Jesus tells a parable about a vineyard owner who planted a fig tree in his vineyard. Notice he plants a tree in the same soil as the rest of the trees in his vineyard. This particular tree, amen, was a faithful tree. And it had been there for three years. Now, hear me today. Why are we talking about the tree like it's a person? Because the, 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 all, the, uh, the fig tree is a type of Israel. And the fig tree also is a type of the church. Are you hearing me today? So uh, when I refer to the fig tree, I'm actually talking about you and me. Are, are you understanding me today? Hallelujah, I only got maybe two or three. I said, when I talk about the fig tree, I'm talking about you and me. Because God plants us places. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I said, God plants us in places. Amen. We are the planting of the Lord. I said, we are the planting of the Lord. We, we live in whose vineyard? His vineyard. Oh, hallelujah. And he planted you. Amen. And so the fig tree was a faithful tree. Amen. And it had been there for three years. Everyone said it was there for three years. And it had been in the same spot, in the same position for three years. Uh, this fig tree had been planted there, amen, for three years. Here, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but I'm doing it for a purpose because you got to get it in your mind and in your spirit that this tree had been in the house of God for three years. Now, amen, there are some of you that, that the Lord has planted in a particular place, uh, in a particular job, in, in, in church position, and the owner of the vineyard uh, shows up. Uh, the owner of the vineyard is Jesus, uh, or God, any way you want to call him, uh, amen, and he does not expect, uh, amen, the, 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 he, he does not expect the fruit tree only to be faithful, but he expects the fruit tree after three years to be fruitful. 
Well, I, you got about maybe 5% of you. Can, let me say that again to these people over here. I said, God, he comes to the vineyard uh, and he looks at the fruit tree and he doesn't find any fruit on it in it because he's looking for fruit. After three years, he should expect some fruit. And he doesn't expect the fruit tree just to be faithful. He expects a fruit tree to be fruitful. Hallelujah. Somebody said amen. 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 You've been there three years already. You ought to have some fruit. Ooh, man, it got quiet. I don't know why. Hallelujah. Amen. And so here we are. And so the Lord expects, inspects this fruit tree and this fig tree. And it's planted in the right place because it's planted near all the other trees. It's in the vineyard. It's been faithful in its planting. Amen. And it stayed where it was planted. Are you hearing me? Amen. He planted it in the church. He planted it in the vineyard where all, of, all the rest of his people are. It's his vineyard. He's not talking about the world. He's not talking about the unsaved. He's talking about his vineyard. And his vineyard are his people. Somebody understanding me today. Amen. His vineyard is his people, and he plants people in the church. Amen. And so he goes here, and he's looking for fruit from this particular tree, but it has not been fruitful, and there are no figs on the tree. All right, and this is the one, one of the most frustrating things in the kingdom of God is that to have believers who have been planted but not producing. Amen. Amen. God didn't plant you in that position or in the church just so that you can look good. He planted you there so that you can be productive and so that you can be fruitful. Thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. This, this fig tree, uh, amen, is in the vineyard. Uh, and this tree is drinking the same water and it's eating the same food. Uh, it's getting the same fertilizer as all the other trees. However, after three years, uh, it's not being fruitful. It's still barren. And somebody understanding what I'm talking about. The Lord has planted you in a corporate arena and in the church arena. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, amen, you shall be like a tree planted near the rivers of water. It's talking about the tree again. The tree meaning the children of God in the house of God. And the Bible said, amen, the Bible is saying that you're going to be you're going to be fruitful and you are going to be successful because I planted you near the rivers of water. What's the rivers of water? Everybody that has the Holy Ghost in the church, amen, the pastor as he preaches the word of God, the ministers as they preach the word of God, amen, they are, these are the rivers of water water. Amen. Amen. And that means he plants us near several sources. Amen. You just don't have one source, but he, he gives us several sources. Uh, amen. We have cell meetings, and we have uh, a discipleship class, and, and we have a, a prayer meeting, and we, and we have preaching, and we have teaching, and, and we have a, a, a praise team, and, and all of these sources. We have Sunday school. These are all sources within our hands, uh, and you have an uh, opportunity to be able to serve in each and every or, or some of these particular sources. And you have opportunity to grow in these sources. But if you are not taking advantage of the sources that God has put you in and the rivers of water that flow right by your side and are not growing, that something's wrong with the tree. It's not the source. It's not the rivers. It's the tree. Maybe we ought to preach to these guys over here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you, are you comprehending what I'm talking about? It's going to get good in a little while. Just, just stick with me on this. Amen. Because God's about to change some things in people's lives. I'm not getting on to you. Amen. I'm just exposing some stuff. I said, amen. Tap somebody on the side. Say, He's just exposing some stuff. Amen. Sometimes truth hurts and it's okay. I said, it's okay. Amen. Because you're still the planting of the Lord. And God loves you so much that he's pruning you.
Because when he prunes you, amen, guess what happens after the pruning? The fruit comes. Woo! Come on, somebody, somebody tap your name and say, oh, I'm going to bear some fruit after this is all done. Whoa, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So get with me tonight. Amen. It's okay if I step on your torch. Just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Pastor, for stepping on my toes tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so, so if, 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 uh, if, if, like I said, one of the most frustrating things in the kingdom of God is to have believers planted in the house of God, but yet, yet they are not producing. God, God planted us for a purpose. Uh, amen. And he planted you there so that you can be productive, so that you can bear fruit. Uh, and this tr vineyard tree or this tree that was in the vineyard, uh, amen, was eating the same stuff as everybody else does. Uh, amen. I'm preaching the same stuff as a person next to you. They're not getting a different message than what I'm preaching to you. You, uh, I mean, you're all getting the same food. But only some are growing and some are not. Some are bearing fruit and some are not. Uh, let me tell you something. When, when somebody bears fruit, when a tree bears fruit, okay, let's just say that there is a uh, avocado tree out there, and it's huge, and it's bearing all kinds of avocados. Guess what? The avocado tree is not going to come in the house of God, amen, because it's right outside, and start passing out the fruit. Right? Right? Why? Because when, when something is bearing fruit, you go to it to pick the fruit. Amen. When there's fruit in the house, uh, people come in to pick the fruit. But if you got no fruit to pick, uh, amen, then something's wrong with your tree. Amen. If no one's coming to your Bible study, and no one's, and if you're not, if, if you're not giving any kind of Bible study to somebody or trying to tell somebody about Jesus, amen. Then something's wrong with your fruit. No one's coming to you and asking questions about the God that you serve. Something's wrong with your tree. Amen. Come on, somebody. There's no fruit there to pick. Amen. But when you got the Holy Ghost and full of the power and the anointing of Almighty God, amen. Then people want to come up to you and they want to pick the fruit that you got. And you're not falling asleep in church. Somebody said yes. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I want to be fruitful. I want, I want there. I want, I, I want to bear a lot of fruit. Amen. So people can come and say, Pastor, what about this? Pastor, amen. Can you help me with this? Pastor, amen. What about this scripture? Are you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about? I'm talking about people coming to bear fruit or to pick the fruit. Amen. That I might have. Oh, hallelujah. Can I just get off my notes? Amen. Some people might say, well, man, my, my pastor's anointed. You know why I'm anointed? Amen. And you're not? It because, because while you're sleeping, I'm studying. While you're sleeping, I'm praying. Amen. While you're out there playing, amen, I'm, uh, I, I'm in my office, amen, studying the word of God. Amen. If you want the anointing that some of these preachers have, amen, when they come, to, when, they, when they come here, they said, my God, Brother Drossy, all he did was just brought people up to this altar and all, every, all kinds of people got healed. Hallelujah. Well, if you want that kind of anointing, you got to pay the price. Uh, you got to pray like he prays. You got to seek God like he seeks God. You got to be serious about God like he is. Amen. You got to get off your little games on your phones and get off your gossip calling them get up get off facebook amen and start gossiping and, and liking stuff that isn't even right hallelujah Woo, jesus is this okay I'm talking about bearing fruit. There's some things that we got to separate ourselves from. There's some things that we got to do we, that we got to do right. Uh, amen. Because we're drinking out of the same fountain, and the Lord's planted us. Amen. So that we can what bear fruit. 
So that means he plants you near several sources. And I, 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 I got I to gotta drink the water from the, that source. And see, your job is, is, is not your source. Your car is not your source. Your Boaz is not your source. I mean, your home is not your source. Your banking account is not your source. Your business is not your source. You know who your source is? Jesus is is your is your source. He's your brother. He's your sister. He's your mother. He's your father. He's your prophet. He's your high priest. He's your Lord and your God. He's your joy. He's your peace. He's a bright and morning star. He's the lily of the valley. He's your rock and your manna. He's a praise. He's your glory. He's your provider and your protector. He's your sword and he's your strong high tower. He's your provider. He's your keeper. He's your savior and he is your king. Oh, hallelujah. But if I lose all of that, but if I lose all of that, if I lose everything that I might have, uh, amen, and still have Jesus, I still have more than enough. Somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Amen. Tell somebody, amen, that Jesus is my source. And that's all I need. That's all I need. Listen, listen, listen. Amen. When a tree has fruit, amen, amen, then we go to that tree and we, 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 we pick the fruit. We pick the fruit. Amen. And when, 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 uh, when we come to church, we want to come and pick fruit. Preach to me, Pastor. Tell me, give me a nugget that I can that can help me grow and help me become what God wants me to be. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't pray that, you need to pray that every time you come to the house of God. You need to pray, God, give my pastor the words that'll help me, that'll bless me, that'll help me overcome, that'll help me be better, that'll help me be anointed, that'll lead me to a straight path. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And God is your source, and that's why he plants you. He plants you. And you are planted by the rivers of water so that you can bring forth fruit in your season. Amen. So that, so that your leaf will not wither. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. And whatever you touch is going to be blessed. And whatever you put in your hand, amen, is going to be blessed. And whatever you plant, and wherever you plant your feet, amen, it's going to prosper. That's why God, amen, planted you in the kingdom of God so that you can be a blessed individual not for your sake, but for his sake. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, amen. And there's many people, though, it is so sad and that within the church, uh, amen, we got trees, uh, amen, that don't even care they're not being fruitful. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something, amen, that that's what he's looking for. He's looking for the fruit. Listen, when, when, when God plants us, he builds us. L listen to me very carefully. Amen. This will change your whole, if you get this, this will change your whole attitude on how you live. Amen. When God plants us, he builds within us the ability to succeed. Hear me. I'm going to explain that in a moment. Amen. It's okay. You can clap. But, but when he plants us, he puts in us. An ability to succeed without failure. Just like, a, just like a corn seed. What does the Bible say? Amen. A, you put a corn, unless a corn seed falls into the ground and does what? Die. Amen. Then it will bring forth what? Much fruit. Isn't that what it says? But it has to fall into the ground. Amen. Now, Sister Isabella, she's not here tonight. She's, she's working. But she's been watering a plant. Amen. That's out in the front. Do you know where it's at? Could you go bring it, please? Thank you. All right. Now, um, if it die, it's going to bring forth much fruit. 
But if you just have the seed right here on top, it's not going to do nothing. If it's not taking in any moisture and it's not taking and it hasn't been buried into the ground, it hasn't been planted properly, it is not going to do anything. Hear me tonight. Hey man, I'm, t I'm, I'm trying to explain to you that, that God has put within each and every one of us that are spirit-filled and born again. He has put within each and every one of us a mechanism that is bound to succeed without failure. Are you understanding me? Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you are bound to succeed. Amen. You are destined to succeed. Tell somebody. Amen. With, with, with meaning. Tell somebody with an attitude. You are destined to succeed. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you're the, you're the authority of God. You are destined to succeed. You are destined to succeed. God plan is for you to succeed and he has no other plan for you but to succeed he has no other plan for you but to make it he has no other plan for you but to but but to be successful in the kingdom of god there's no other plan for you but to be but to be prosperous there's no other plan for you but to be blessed there's no other plan for you than to be the head and not the tail there's no other plan for you than to be above and not beneath You are destined to succeed. Hallelujah. Yeah, can you put that right there, please? Just set it right there. No, no, put it a little forward so everybody gets to see it. Matter of fact, put it right there in front, in front of the pulpit. I'm sorry. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. Amen. So, <laughs> all you have to do with the seed, is put it in the ground and add some moisture, add some water to it, and it's going to grow. You don't even have to pray for it, sister. Because that's the law. That's the law of sowing and reaping. It's a law. See this here? Remember when Brother Gomez came? And, and right on top of the platform, we planted what? Tomato seeds, right? We just stuck them in the ground. Remember that? Okay. And so my wife told Isabella, I didn't know this until one day I, I seen her watering, putting water in this pot. I go, what are you doing, Sister Isabella? She says, I'm watering the tomato seeds that we put in the pot. And that's been, what, about three weeks ago? I didn't see her after she watered, lift up her hands and say, oh, God, make this plant grow. I didn't see her come back into the church and start pacing the altar. Oh, God, that water that I put in that plant. Oh, God, make those seeds grow. I didn't see her fasting and praying over it, travailing over the pot. Are you following what I'm saying? Brother Manuel. It's a law. I mean, it's going to happen no matter who says what. If you put a seed in the ground and you add some water to it, it's going to grow. God put it in every seed on this earth, that little mechanism to be successful, Sister Rose. Whether it's a mustard seed, a tomato seed, an avocado seed, or whatever kind of seed. Amen. It is destined to be successful if you plant it and you add some water to it. That's why the Lord said, you shall be like trees planted near the rivers of water. Oh, hallelujah. And you shall give your fruit in due season. Oh, hallelujah. You're planted in the house of the Lord. Uh, you're planted near the rivers of water. Amen. I said you're planted near the rivers of water. You're planted near word, the word of God. Amen. And Holy Ghost uh, and anointing and the power of God. And uh, we're watering you every week, several times a week, putting water in you. And it's all up to you whether you drink. Come on, come on. 
or you don't grow. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. You don't even have to pray. I'm not saying don't pray. Okay, but there's some things that you don't even have to pray about. It's just going to happen. It's just going to happen. Let me give you some scripture. Amen. In Genesis, I mean, this goes back all the way to creation. God set this law in Genesis 22 or 8 and 22. You can put it up there if you like. It says, but all the way from the very beginning. It says, while the earth remaineth. It means as long as the earth is still here. Okay? Seed time and harvest. Cold and heat. Summer and winter. Day and night shall not cease. It's just the law. We don't have to pray about the sun coming up tomorrow. It's just going to happen. We don't have to pray about the sun going down. It's just going to happen. We don't have to pray about summer. It's going to get hot. We, can, we know when it's going to get hot. We don't have to pray about winter because it's going to get cold. Time to turn on the heater. We don't have, are you hearing what I'm talking about? These things are just the law. We don't have to pray about it. So if we live for God and we come to church and we drink in the river of water and we allow ourselves to be planted amen, near that river and Try to be, meaning, meaning when you're planting near the river, amen, you're planting the ground where the river's flowing, you're always going to be drinking. You're always going to say, Thank God for that message. Thank God for that Bible study. Thank God for that song. And you're always going to be drinking of the rivers of water. So, without even praying about God help me to grow, you are going to grow. It's just going to happen. That's the law. That's the law. You're going to be prosperous. You're, you're, you're going to be the head and not the tail. You don't even have to pray about these things because that's the law. You don't have to say, God, make me the head. You are the head already. It's the law. Are you understand what I'm talking about? Amen. Want to know the law of success? Amen. This is it. Amen. This is how we put that law in action. The law of, of reaping and sowing or the law of seed time and harvest. Amen. You come to church, you're receiving the seed, and you want to know how to grow. Amen. You want to know how to cultivate that seed, how to fertilize that seed so that you don't have to be in a barren position next year. You want to know how to bear some fruit? Oh, hallelujah. This is how you do it. Amen. It's back at the beginning again. Amen. Uh, right before Joshua uh, entered into the promised land in Joshua 1 and 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. See, why? Because I'm, I'm planted right next to the river of water. Anytime I get thirsty, I take a drink. I take a drink of his word. I take a drink of some preaching. I take a drink of some teaching. I take a drink, amen, of some reading. Hallelujah. Amen. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt what? Meditate therein when? Day and night, all day long. God, what does that mean, Lord? God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, show me. Amen. Oh, I know I know. Amen. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to debt my life. This is what I'm going to, this is how I'm going to change. This is what I'm going to do, well, how I'm going to conduct my life now. Amen. I'm going to meditate therein day and night that thou mayest what? To observe, to do according to all that is written therein. I want to be able to fulfill, amen, the law, the, the, for, for, fulfill the will of God, fulfill the commandments of the Lord, fulfill fulfill his purpose for me for then when it says then that means when you do all the above thou shalt make thy way what prosperous and then what thou shalt have what good success See, those are things you don't even have to pray about. Once you get, once you, once you start following God and doing what God wants you to do, you are bound to be successful. You are bound to be prosperous. That is just the end of the story. You don't have to ask God to make you successful. You don't have to ask God to, to, to make you prosperous. You can save that time to pray for somebody else, to cast out a devil, to do something else. 
But these are the fringe benefits that we get for serving God. Some of us, amen, are so frustrated because you're so barren today, amen, that you're like, man, I've been in church those this long, and how many souls have I won? What am I doing? Amen. How many Bible studies am I teaching? Who am I witnessing to? No fruit. No fruit. How could you give when you have no fruit? Why? Because you're not hanging out near the rivers of water. You're not meditating on the Word of God. You're not doing according to all that is written therein. Mm, somebody said, praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I want to have good success. I am bound to have good success. I am bound to have good success. Every morning I wake up and I begin to pray the tabernacle. I begin to pray. I begin to get a hold of God. I begin to ask him to forgive me. I put myself on the altar, amen, of, a, of a, the brazen altar. I said, burn off all my impurities. Burn off all the things that are not right in my mind, my heart, my spirit. God, burn them off, God. Burn off the fat, amen, that, that is unneedful. God in the name of Jesus and help me Father to go to the brazen labor amen so that you can wash me with hyssop wash me in the inward parts God wash me Father the things that I don't even know of God help me Amen. I walk into the temple, into the holy place, and I say, God, help me to see what you want me to see. Help me, Father, to gain revelation. Father, like you want me to see it. Help me to understand it like you want me to understand it. God, open up my eyes. Open up my understanding. I'm going to eat your word. God, as I go to the altar, God, of shoe bread, and even though it might be bitter, but help me to receive it, to retain it, to love it so that I can obey it. Help me to pray, God, and send a sweet incense, uh, God, into your nostrils. Help me to worship you and praise you and love you so that when I get into the holies of holies. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every day, every day, I go through that and God gives me different revelations. I give you just a very short version of about a 45-minute prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I don't even start praying for myself, my family, or my marriage, or, or you until after that's done. I got to get myself clean first so that I can be more effective, so I can bear fruit. Oh, hallelujah. I want to bear fruit. Uh, I want to bear fruit so that you can eat. Uh, amen. Some of you are getting a hold of this and you're saying, Pastor, you know what? Uh, amen. Something's clicking inside. Something's turning inside. Amen. I can see what you're talking about, Pastor. I want to do this. Uh, I want to be successful. God, I want to bear fruit. God, God, uh, uh, God, uh, uh, I want to be prosperous, Lord. Oh, I'm telling you, amen. These are things that you don't even have to pray about. Amen. It's just going to happen as you align yourself with with God's word. Uh, amen. So at the end of all that, God, help me to align myself. God, take off all of these just, all of these things out of my life that are unneedful so that I can have good success. Amen. amen. And prosperous. Not for my glory, but for yours. But for your Is somebody understanding what I'm talking about? See, God planted you here, amen, by divine appointment and by divine order. It's because he has a purpose for you. And his purpose and his plans are for to prosper you. Yeah. Amen. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. Uh, it shall not return unto me void, uh, but it shall accomplish that which I please. Uh, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Joshua 29 and 11 says, For, for, uh, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for what? To prosper you and not to harm you. Everyone thinks God wants to take stuff from me, but God doesn't want to take stuff from you. He wants to bless you. Right. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. People think, man, you know, uh, I got to stop this. I got to stop doing that. And uh, Let me tell you. Okay. The stuff that is wrong in your life is up here and stuff that is is wrong is down here. I mean, right is down here. And you're like, man, I don't want to stop this. You know, I have fun doing that. You know, but yet it brings aggravation. It brings frustration. 
and then it brings eternal damnation. But if you just switch it, it brings peace, it brings joy, it brings happiness, it brings love, it brings eternal salvation. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Tell somebody, amen, tap them on the shoulder, slap them on the shoulder. Tell them, what do you want? Amen. Some of you Spanish-speaking people tell them, que mas quieres? Hallelujah. Amen. So when, when, when God, li listen to me, when God plants you, everyone say, I'm planted. He expects a return. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because he's, he's the one that's expecting the vineyard. It's his vineyard. Okay, man, this thing's producing pretty good. Too bad they're fake. But uh, You know what I'm talking about. Amen. He, he goes to each and every one of our trees and sees whether you are being fruitful or not. Whether you're barren or whether you're fruitful. Amen. You just answer your own question. Where, where do you stand if you were to come in today? You answer your own question. Hallelujah. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Praise Amen. You are not just to be faithful, but you're, but you're to be fruitful. Amen. Amen. That, that tree was there for three long years, and it was faithful. It was there planted in the vineyard. It was there in church for three long years. Amen. Some of you have been here a lot longer than that. But if I go to pick out some fruit and say, hey, can I use you for this? Can I use you for that? No, I don't want to do that. I don't... Unfruitful. And some I don't ask because you're not ready. You still haven't learned how to be in church on time. How can I put you in any kind of position when you, when you come in late every, every week? How can I trust you to, to, to be a leader of, of, uh, of five or ten when you can't even be a leader of yourself? It's Sunday. What else do you do? It's 4 o'clock. Actually, we started at 3.30. Hey, Amen. Amen. If you don't come for prayer, that's, something's wrong. Hallelujah. Someone might say, well, Pastor, you been, yes, I have been. Amen. For the, I've, I've, I've switched my clock around. Amen. Even if I have to stay up to 4 o'clock in the morning like I did last night so that I can be prepared, so I can come in this morning ready. Hallelujah. Be here at 3 o'clock or 3.30. Amen. To have my pre-service meeting. Amen. And arrange who's going to pray and, 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 and who's going to do what. Go through the whole schedule. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. Amen. It doesn't matter to me if I only got four hours of sleep last night. I'm not asking, I'm asking for your sympathy. Amen. That's my sacrifice to him. That's why he anoints me. That's why he blesses me. That's why he uses me. Because I'm putting his kingdom first. Hallelujah. And somebody said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you think, amen, that, 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 you had, that you had victory in the last six months of this year, wait till the next six months. Uh, oh, hallelujah. God's going to blow your mind. I said, God's going to blow your mind because some of you are getting a hold of this and you're going to become fruitful, not just faithful, but fruitful. Oh, hallelujah. Because I is, because it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Uh, and somebody said, yes. Tell somebody God has a plan for you. God is going to move you from being faithful to fruitful. I said, God, tell somebody God's going to move you from being faithful to fruitful. You're not just going to be a Sunday goer. You're going to be a fruitful tree in the house of God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So here the owner shows up at the fig tree. I mean, the fig tree represents you and I and it represents the church. And this fig tree is not producing for three years. Listen to me. This fig tree has been planted in the same position for three years. And it has been unfruitful all of those three years. Now, one of the suggestions for this tree is to just cut it off. It's been faithful. But you know what? Let's do away with it. Because that's not bringing any fruit in the position that we put it in. Hello? Now, in the Bible, it talks about two kinds of fruit. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and we find one in the book of Galatians where it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, amen, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, nine uh, fruits of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Okay, so, so we are not the producer. Listen to me. We are not the producer of the fruit. We are the bearers of the fruit. I'm to bear love. I'm to bear long-suffering. I'm to bear kindness. I'm to bear joy. I'm to bear peace. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? I don't produce it. I bear it. How do I get to bear those kind of things? By by sitting next to the rivers of water, getting a hold of God, allowing God to change me. Let me tell you, because it takes, it's going to take the Holy Ghost, amen, in me in order to love you. That's the truth, right? Amen. You wouldn't love me if you didn't have the Holy Ghost. It takes all of the Holy Ghost in me to love you. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Okay, I'm not, making a, I'm not making fun. I'm just telling bare facts. Amen. If I was still in the world and here, I'd hate all of you. I'd try to rip you off. Hallelujah. You hear what I'm talking about? But the Holy Ghost, amen, as I got into the river of water, it changed my feelings. It changed my attitude. It changed my heart. It changed my spirit. It changed everything about me and made you love me love you regardless of your problem regardless of your unfaithfulness regardless of your barrenness regard <laughs> hallelujah amen but it causes us to love one another right Amen. The Holy Ghost, even God, staying next to the river of water. Now, a person that always has an attitude, a person that always has a gripe and a complaint, it's because they're not drinking at the river of water. I don't want to shake that lady's hand. I'm going to sit over here. They need, they need a good slap of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But when you get the good dose of the Holy Ghost, my Lord makes you love everybody. Makes you, makes you just want to cuddle everybody. And the Holy Ghost. And somebody said amen. Amen. Now, so now, 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 now in the Bible, amen, it, it, uh, when, when this thing was unbarren, amen, the, the, the Lord wanted to cut it off. Uh, and, and so, again, we're not the producer of the fruit. We are the bearer of the fruit. So the more I abide in him, the more fruit I bear. Right? I mean, you know, in, in, in John chapter 14, it says, if you abide in me and I in you, what does it say? He said, bring forth fruit. Amen. And then it goes from barren to fruit to much fruit and more fruit. Wow. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, it's, it's, it's like joy that I have. The world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. I said there were, you see, see, see well, I, got, I got this fruit. Amen. Take everything from me, but I, got, but I still got joy. The world didn't give it to me, and the world didn't take it away. Amen. Take my car, take my home, take my banking account, but I still got joy. I still got joy. I still got joy. So you can take all, all that away, but I still got the source, brother. Brother, 
I still got the source, Brother Oscar. I still got Jesus. And Jesus is going to give me love. And Jesus is going to give me joy. And Jesus is going to give me peace. And Jesus. Because I still got the source. And somebody said amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So in Galatians 5, I'm not, I'm not the producer of the fruit, but I am just what? The bearer of it. I'm the bearer of love. I'm the bearer of, of peace. I'm the bearer of joy. Amen. I can carry it. Uh, amen. But I can't conceive it. Are you hearing me? I carry it, but I can't make it happen. I can't, I can't produce it. Hallelujah. And in John 15 and 4, it says, Abide in me and I in you and as a branch, and a, a, as a branch cannot bear fruit of itself. See, you can't, you can't make it. Amen. Amen. The, the, the fruit only comes when you abide in Him. Amen. Except it abide in the vine. No more can you, can, except you abide in me. See, you can't bear the fruit or make the fruit. You can, you, you can just bear the fruit as long as you stick to the vine, which is Jesus and the water and, and the rivers of living water. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. In verse 5 it says, I am the vine, and you are the branches. And he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth how much fruit? See, first it was fruit, now it's much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Turn to someone and say, you can't do nothing without him. You can't do nothing without him. Amen. There, you see, there, first, there is a fruit tree that doesn't bear any fruit. And when I, when I find a believer, listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. See, see, there's a fruit tree. Okay? Someone say the fruit tree. Doesn't bear fruit. So when there's a believer who bears no fruit, I have to reassign him or her. I have to remove them or transfer them into another piece of ground. I've got to move them from one position to another. I've got to move them from one ministry to another because they're not bearing fruit in the ministry that they're in. This is what the whole parable is about. It's about bearing fruit. And if you don't bear fruit in a particular ministry, then the owner of the vineyard, cut it down. Do away with it. But thank God for grace. Grace comes. You see when grace comes in? Grace comes in. It's a, no, 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 master. Let me work with it a year. Let, let, let me dig around it amen, and give it some TLC. Let me, let, let me put some, some, some fertilizer around it, amen, and, 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 and let me maybe even transplant and replant it into a, 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 another ministry here or another part of the vineyard. Maybe I need to put it in the shade or maybe I need to put it in the, in, in, in the sun. or, You know, I mean, with plants, that's what you got to do, right? Some plants don't take sun like others. Some plants need nothing but shade. Some plants need outdoors and some plants need indoors. I mean, you ever put a, a plant that belongs in the indoor, outdoors? Guess what? Don't matter if you got it in the shade or whatever. Amen. The moment that sun hits it, it scorches it. All right? And sometimes that, that's what we have to do with people in the church. We have to change positions. We have to, hey, you're not being fruitful right here. We have to put you over here. Well, why can't I do that? Because you're not doing it. And it's not time to get offended. Amen. We want you to be fruitful, so we put you in a, This is why the shift is all about. This is what the shift is all about. we got to shift you so that you can become more fruitful. And we got to take you out of the heat and put you into a more cool, not-so-pressing position <laughs> so that you can bear fruit there. Am I making sense to anybody here tonight? Hallelujah. But those that are bearing fruit, amen, in the position that they're in, amen, Sister Alma, Alma said it tonight, amen. I remember when I first came into this ministry, we only had like, what, 13 people? What did you say, six? 
We ran about 10, Matt, when we know in the good days we've maxed out at 19, but now we have how many? 35 co consistently. And then on, on a special day, we have like up to 40, 50 and, and above, right? 70 kids. That's fruit. That's fruit. That's fruit. That's fruit. That's fruit. So what do we do? I said, okay, I'm a, amen. You've been, very, you, you, you've been very fruitful in this little thing, and now we're going to shift you over here and put another person there that has been fruitful, amen, amen, and, 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 and just a, an assistant. Now we're going to make this assistant the director. Oh, hallelujah, amen. That's fruit. That, that's the shifting going on. Is somebody understanding what, I'm, what we're doing here? Somebody understand? We're trying, to, we're trying to help you grow. We're trying to help you be prosperous, amen. But if you don't get in the river, you will never be able to bear any kind of fruit. Does this make sense? Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and so, and, so the, and, then, and then there is a tree that is producing fruit. Amen. Someone say, I'm producing fruit. So when I find a believer that is producing fruit, amen, we don't reassign, it. We don't reassign them. What do we do? We prune them. Amen. We prune them. It's okay. You know, don't do this. Try this. Amen. Change this. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and, and what are we doing? Amen. We're going we're, we're gonna to prune so that we can produce more fruit. Much fruit. Come on. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The, wine, the, 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 the vineyard dresser has to come by and prune away the weeds and prune, prune, prune away the things that are unneedful so that we can, we can pr produce more fruit. And somebody said, praise the Lord. Don't take it offensively. We are just all in it for the same purpose, and that's for the kingdom of God, to grow the kingdom of God, to make the kingdom of God better. Amen. To, to perfect it and so that we can come to church with excellence. Somebody say, praise the, praise the Lord. Amen. I'm trying to hear you now. Here, here we see no fruit, and then we see fruit, and then we see much fruit, and then more fruit. Oh, hallelujah. I want to get to the more fruit. Amen. Amen. And some of you, let, let, let me tell you something. Some of you, amen, are in each and every one of these categories. Should I say them again? No fruit, fruit, much fruit, and more fruit. Are you hearing me? Amen. Fruit. To much fruit. Then from much fruit to more fruit. More love. More joy. More peace. More goodness. More faith. More power. More anointing. More grace. Oh, hallelujah. Hey, man, so, so, so when, when the master comes to check out the fruit tree, he says, why should I leave this unprofitable tree right here? It's just taking up space. It's taking up room when I can put a, when I can put a fruitful tree right here. Why? I, I can do better with another, with another tree in its place. I, I should just cut it down, but, but all of a sudden, amen, right before he cuts it down, grace shows up. And thank God. Thank God for grace. Are you hearing me today? Amen. I'm going to switch this. I, I, I'm going to switch gears in just a little bit, so stick with me. Amen. And, and so, so uh, we talked about how grace comes in and, and, and has mercy uh, on this particular tree. Amen. Thank God for grace that has had mercy on each and every one of you. Amen. Nobody kicked you out of church. Nobody says, you know what? You don't, don't come here no more. No, no, are you hearing what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. You make those decisions on your own. Amen. But thank God for the faithful trees. Uh, amen. Thank God for the trees uh, that become faithful and then they become fruitful. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said amen. amen. Somebody said hallelujah. So when God gets done loving you, amen, and, 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 digging, and, and digging around you and, and fertilizing you with some more word and more love and more, more care and giving you a little bit more time, he's about, it's all about taking care of you. God is about blessing you. He's about to open up a door for you. He's about to make a way where there was no way. Or are you hearing what I'm talking about? Amen. I told you at the beginning, amen, that from, but by the time this year is up, some of you are going to bear much fruit some of you are going to be blessed beyond your wild imagination amen some of you have been wondering 
Hear me today. Some of you have been wondering, what does it feel like to be the head and not the tail? You see us quote that scripture a lot, but you're like, man, that sounds good. And that's good preach, but I never experienced that. I'm always wanting. I'm always needing. I'm always in the back of the bus. I'm always being attacked. Amen. And you don't understand and never experience being the head and not the tail. And so you wonder, what does it feel like? Well, God is about to cause you to experience, uh, to experience being the head and not the tail, being above and not beneath. The Lord is about to open up his good treasure for you. Amen. He's going to bless you. Amen. With the work of your hands, uh, he will be the lender. I said, you're going to be the lender and not the borrower. He's going to make you prosperous. Uh, amen. With a lot of good things. Uh, he's going to, he, he's going to bless you in the city, bless you in your workplace, bless you when you're coming in and bless you when you're coming out. He's about to straighten out things in your life. Uh, he's about to make your crooked way straight. Tell somebody, give me a little time and watch God bless me. Watch God bless me. Watch God bless me. Why? Because I'm changing some things. Why? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink out of the rivers of water. I'm going to stay planted near the rivers of water, and I'm going to start drinking. I'm going to become a fruitful, a fruitful tree in the house of God. Would you clap your hands and give him praise? Would you give me a few more minutes? We haven't even got to the woman in the synagogue yet. Hallelujah. There's this woman in the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Amen. She comes and she has this infirmity for 18 years. She had been bound by Satan for 18 years. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because if you just read a little further down, we'll find that Jesus said that she had been bound by, the, by, by Satan all of these years. She was bent over in two and could not straighten up, doubled over. Another translation put it, uh, couldn't, she couldn't even look up. That means this woman was like this. She couldn't even look up. She'd walk around like this. Another translation said that she had paralysis. Another one said that she had arthritis. Whatever. They're just putting medical terms on a dynamic bound. Because Jesus said that she was bound by Satan. Hallelujah. Amen. And when, listen to me. And when Jesus seen her, he calls her to him. And, and watch what Jesus does. Remember when he called the blind man? And he says, what do you want? Yeah. Right? right? Or that I might, you know, you think it was pretty selfish story, right? That I might see. Jesus is standing right there. I want to see. Okay. All right. Or, 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 or when uh, the Syrophoenician woman asked her, what do you want? A lot of instances, Jesus asks those that he's going to minister to, what is it that you want me to do for you? In this instant, he didn't ask one question. Listen, I want to tell you why right now. Listen, he calls her. To him, and he didn't ask her nothing. He didn't press her for what she wanted. He didn't inquire how long had she been in this condition. He had that all figured out before she even walked up. I believe that when the Lord seen her, two, two things crossed his mind like lightning. One, compassion, because she was a child of God, and he knew that she was bent over by the devil. Okay? Two, he wanted to act fast because they were in the synagogue. And he wanted to act before they kicked her out. Because already, I read it in your hearing that the, the leader of the, of the synagogue was already criticizing him. Why is he healing on the Sabbath day? Okay? The religious people are always like, why are they doing that today? Why is pastor preaching long? (laughs) 
<laughs> I only had one person say, really weak. Weak. <laughs> I'm going to do it anyhow. Amen. Because we need this. Hallelujah. Amen. So these things went through his mind. And the major thing was that he had great compassion upon this woman and he wanted to stop this demon, this, 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 this imp from having dominion over her life. So when she was brought to him, he just looked at her and he said, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Hallelujah. And then he says this in verse number 13. He laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Yes. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? Amen. And then in verse 14 we find this, that we find this, uh, this, this, this uh, ruler of the synagogue saying, saying with indignation because that the Lord had healed on the Sabbath day. Hallelujah. My God. Thank God we didn't got religious people in here. Amen. For 18 years she had been not been producing. The fig tree was fruitless for three years. For 18 years she was unproductive. And the fruit tree was unproductive for three years. Because in her there was a demon, as Jesus said. A demon was assigned to her to keep her bound and to keep her from producing. I hope tonight in the name of Jesus that no demon has you bound from producing. But I'm here to declare to you that after the end of this year, every demon, every imp, every evil hold, every curse, every chain, every block, every anchor, every hold, every shackle, every struggle, every tussle, every fight, every battle, every war has been broken. Clap your hands to the Lord. Amen. Tell somebody, you thought I was blessed now. Wait till you see me by the end of the year. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, come on. In Luke 11, amen, behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed, bowed together and, and could in no wise lift herself up. Hear me today. Hear me today. She was bowed over, okay, and she couldn't lift herself up. Amen. I want you to sit on your hands right now. Somebody, everyone, sit on your hands. Sit on your hands. Sit on your hands. Amen. Amen. Now, without using your legs, lift yourself up. Without using your legs, lift yourself up. No, no legs. Just lift yourself up with your hands. Lift yourself up. Dan, come here. Hallelujah. X, come here, X. What's the matter? Having any problems? Come here. Lift them up. No, lift them up in your arms, not like that. No, like a baby. But you did it. You couldn't lift yourself up, but you were able to lift him up. Christianity is not a self-help. I said Christianity is not a self-help. I need you and you need me. I said I need you and you need me. How did the song put it? Amen. You, I pray for you and you pray for me and watch God change things. Isn't it frustrating when you have an anointing to pray for other people and you cast out a devil and they get healed and they get blessed, but you can't do it to yourself? Are you hearing what I'm talking about? 
Oh, hallelujah. Amen. A lot of times I get sick. Amen. And I've seen people get healed. I've, I've, actually, I've actually prayed for people. Their eyes are open. I actually prayed for this one individual, and they came back to life after they were dead. I've actually prayed for people, and cancer, amen, was, 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 was cast out. I prayed for people, and devils were cast out. I prayed for people. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? And, and they, even though they were barren for several, several years, they were having babies. Are you hearing what I'm talking Talking about, but I could not pray for myself and heal my knees or heal my infirmities. Man, I had to come even on Monday night and put my toes right here and felt the power and the anointing of Almighty God as Brother Dross gave the word of faith. This is proof. This is proof. I could not walk up the steps. Like the way I just did. If anyone ever noticed, I walked like that. That's how I walked up the steps. And that's how I came down. And you probably didn't notice. Because of, I couldn't put pressure on my knee. But now, She was bound. She couldn't lift herself up. This implies that she tried to lift herself up. Who in here has not tried to lift themselves up when all hell had come up against us? We try to fix our own problems. We try to fix our own situations. And that's not how it works. That's not how it works, Brother Sonny. You need me, and I need you. We can help somebody else, but we can't help ourselves. But when Jesus saw her, he straightened her up. Some people, listen, I'm coming to a close. Some people only see you when you're coming out of your mess. Listen to me. But you know what, Sister Lisa? Thank God that he sees us in our mess. And he has compassion on us. And he loves us still, regardless of what we've been doing and how long we've been doing it and how many times we did it. He sees us in our mess, and he says, I'm going to straighten that thing out right now. Saint of God, thou art loosed. Saint of God, you have been set free. Tonight, I'm going to declare to you, so I'm going to declare to you, by the authority of Jesus' name that every enemy loose himself from you in Jesus' name. You're the head and not the tail. You're to be above and not beneath. That canker worm that is eating your stuff, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. That caterpillar that is eating your finances, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. That thing that has kept you locked up, and unproductive i rebuke that thing in jesus name god is going to bless the work of your hands and you're going to become the lender and not the borrower. you're going to be prosperous over a lot of stuff amen and you're going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field amen and god's going to bless bless your children bless your basket and bless your storage hallelujah you're going to be blessed coming in and blessed coming out I'm declaring some things. God's going to straighten some things out. 
God's going to strain some things out in your life and he's about to make your crooked way straight so that you can have a blessed life. So that you can have a blessed life. Let's find God and let's say, God, I need you. I need you, God, I need you. You can't do it on your own. It's not a self-help Christianity. You need God.